If you're a geologist and you're looking for a simple, consistent, reliable way to collect structural measurements, then this is a video for you. I'm Nick Tate, and this is another video in the series of Fieldcraft for Geologists. This is the headline version for YouTube. If you want the detail on each video, go to the link below in the description. It'll only cost you a few bucks, and once you're signed up, you'll get all the videos that are already there, plus anything new that I shoot as I find interesting things in the field. Almost all structural measurements can be recorded as a dip and a dip direction. That method is the most reliable because it doesn't require any memory of right hand rules or quadrants or other factors that are easily mixed up, particularly when there's more than one geologist working on a project. If everyone records dip and dip direction, there's the least opportunity for confusion and it's also the easiest way to plot things up in a computer because most software recognises that format. To measure the dip, I use a sighting clinometer and I sight down the face that I'm trying to measure. Whatever is the steepest angle will be the true dip of the bed. And because I can sight through this, I don't have to be right on the outcrop. I can be standing up and in fact some distance away and that gives you a good accurate reading Plus or minus a degree, that's about as good as you get and actually better than putting a, the clinometer on here and trying to read it like this. Because then you're subject to all the little wrinkles in the outcrop. For the dip direction, I use a sighting compass, but I don't sight through it. I look above the outcrop and again, aim it in the direction that's exactly down the dip. I hold it away from my body because I don't want to be too close to the magnet here that'll upset the magnetic compass. And if it happens to be a magnetic rock type, I'll also keep it a, a little bit away from the rock. Now I record all my structural measurements in this GPS data logger. It saves a lot of time at the end of the day and cuts down on transcription errors. And it allows you to plot the symbols up on your map that night without having to use a protractor. And I also take a photograph because that helps me to remember what the rock type was and also if I need to look back and check whether it was a good quality one or not I can just check the photo. Now here's a nicely exposed fold hinge so that's a good place to show you how I collect structural measurements for fold axes and that'll be recorded as plunge and plunge direction. For the plunge, a sighting clinometer. And I'll try and sight down the axis of the fold. And for the plunge direction, again, a sighting compass, and I'll sight from a bit of a distance. And again, a photo to make sure I remember what it looked like. Okay, we're done. No opportunity for confusion. Simple, consistent, and easy to plot up at the end of the day. So one trick you can use on shallow dipping planes like this is to trickle a little bit of water down the plane. It's run generally down the steepest line of the plane. Another trick you can use for shallow dipping planes if you're in a creek is the water line. I just measure perpendicular to the evaporation lines because those will have been exactly horizontal when the water was here. I always try to collect measurements either on the top of a ridge or in a creek because they're the places that are least likely to be disturbed. The general rule I use is that if I can see several outcrops that show the same orientation over a significant distance, then I'm reasonably happy that's a real orientation. If they're higgledy-piggledy all over the place like this, find another place. It just poisons your data if you put crap measurements in there.